people. Welcome to Tematalk's Side Chats. I know I told you this was going to come out next week, but surprise, happy Easter, or if you don't celebrate Easter, happy end of March weekend. I'm going to surprise you with this early. So what is this, you're asking yourself? This is when I feel like I need to put an episode out outside the normal rotation, and that could be for many different reasons, I'm just going to put out an extra one, and that's how it's going to work. There won't be any rhyme or reason, really, as far as a schedule or when you can expect them. They'll just be little surprise extra episodes. So that's the deal. That's what we're going to do. And, of course, these are also brought to you by the Tema Contra Memorial Trust, which, as you know, is Canada's leading provider of peer support, family assistance, education, and training for all of our emergency services, public safety, military personnel, and their families. If you haven't done so yet, check them out at tema.ca, please. And, of course, the views, opinions, and endorsements expressed in each podcast episode are mine and my guests alone and do not necessarily reflect the official position of the Tema Contra Memorial Trust. There, that's out of the way again. So, how have you guys been doing? How are you? How are you making out? I'm doing okay. I'll tell you something. Just something a little kind of funny, kind of not, that happened to me recently. I used to love paramedic and firefighter shows, TV shows, a lot. However, since probably third watch, I haven't been able to since I started having issues and and then, of course, being diagnosed and really wasn't able to bring myself to watch any kind of shows like that on a regular basis, whether it be hospital shows, paramedic shows, or, or firefighter shows specifically. So, I'm sitting here and I see the this new show is coming out, this Station 19. looks awesome. And I'm feeling pretty good. I'm thinking, you know, I can probably do this. It looks pretty cool. So I watched the first episode, which is like a two-hour series premiere. And I liked it. I, yeah, it was okay. I, uh, I enjoyed it. But what I noticed afterwards is that throughout the day after watching it emotionally I started to go downhill and I didn't really realize what was going on until I sat back and you know just asked myself you know what is this and I think it was probably because I watched that show so you know I think it just brought back a lot of memories and it and it brought back the feelings of I still want to do that you know I used to be able to do those things very well and now I can't and that hurts and I don't know if it ever won't hurt so once I realized that I mean I I think I sort of said to myself you know what I'm gonna I just have to stay away from those shows it's just not worth it. The price to watch it is too expensive for me. And that's okay. There's lots of other stuff to watch. But if you've ever had a, you know, if you've ever had something happen like that to you, I just wanted to tell you my story because, you know, in in so many just like so many other ways, you're not alone. I struggle too sometimes. So, here's your trigger warning. The subject matter of this episode may be disturbing to some people and it may trigger them may trigger you if you have trigger issues so do whatever you need to do and I always say that so let's give some examples go for a walk meditate color do something that relaxes you yoga there's lots of different things you could do do something though and get yourself in a good mindset so you can get the most out of this uh, this chat because it's really cool. My guest for the first episode of Tema Talk Side Chats is Kevin Eastwood. 
And Kevin is a producer and director in Vancouver. And the reason why I'm talking to him is because he has created a powerful documentary called After the Sirens. And it is due to air on CBC on April 8th. So I wanted to make sure I have him on to talk about the documentary. I was able to watch a, an advanced screener of it. And it was amazing. It's fantastic. So I wanted to have him on, get a chat done, and get this episode out before the air date so we can tell all you guys about it. So that's what we're doing. And that's why we're here. That's why you're listening, hopefully. It was great. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. It was a dark and stormy night. Nor'easter rolling in. Welcome to Tema Talks, Kevin. Thank you for joining us all the way from beautiful Vancouver. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, Kevin, before we get into this captivating documentary that you have directed that I want to talk about, I want to learn a little bit about you. So just tell me a little bit about you and uh, you know how you were brought up and what led you to become a director. Oh, well, I uh, yeah, I'm a filmmaker in Vancouver. I'm a, both a director and a producer. Um, I have quite a background in producing uh, kind of a mix of different things. I started out in uh, dramatic feature films, but documentary was always something I was passionate about. And so uh, after uh, kind of starting my career as an in-house producer at a, a Vancouver-based production company of feature films, I, um, I kind of struck out on my own and ever since then have kind of alternated between doing non-fiction stuff, documentaries, and then uh, and doing dramatic stuff. I kind of uh, love that mix of going from meeting real people and dealing with real issues, and then also d- dealing with dramatic storytelling. I love them both. People often ask me which I prefer. Um, I, I, I love them <laughs> both. In some ways, documentary, though, is um, is perhaps more just kind of stimulating because it's kind of the difference between making a movie and living a movie. You're, you're actually meeting the characters that you're portraying on screen. So uh, there, there's a greater responsibility that comes with that, mm. and that can be often... Uh, intimidating and, and nerve wracking. Yeah, it's also, uh, really, really gratifying when it all kind of works out, and especially, in, you know, on topics like this where you can bring attention to an issue and hopefully perhaps even affect some positive change. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that this is going to do that. This is, this is going to, uh, really open some people's eyes. This documentary, oh. After the Sirens, it's called, if you were to give a brief description, if someone ask, were to ask you what it's about, what would you tell them? Um, well, I would say it's it's you know a very personal take through the the uh, the description and through the accounts of three paramedics themselves about what it's like to suffer a, a traumatic event and therefore experience PTSD as a result. We it was kind of a conscious uh, choice to really let paramedics themselves speak about their experiences. Everybody in the film is either a paramedic or a former paramedic. Even our, our expert voices are both individuals who used to work as paramedics. So okay. that it's not identified in the film. At one point we thought of it, it's spelling that out, but we decided to just let that be. But I think that is unique in that it lets um, the people who are, you know, it's, it's the, the, them telling about their experiences in their own voice. Yeah, I... I was lucky enough you guys sent me a, an advanced screener of this, so I watched it. And being a, a former paramedic myself and, and going through PTSD, I found it very hard to watch. It was I had to bite it off in chunks. But that speaks to how just how engaging it is. I, I would say this is a really raw, candid expose on the weight that paramedics carry throughout their career. I mean, it's obviously... Those of us who are paramedics, we're blessed to be able to do it and blessed to be able to help people, and we and we love that, but it, it, it is an enormous weight, and I, I felt that this documentary tells that perfectly. I really enjoyed Clive Derbyshire, who's a, a paramedic in downtown east side Vancouver. His story was was really raw, and he was awesome. You've have, you have other excellent people on this, like Natalie Harris, who's no... No, no stranger to this podcast. Uh, I really enjoyed listening to Dawn. And, of course, you had Vince Savoya on there as well, uh, as well as Cheryl uh, Drewitz-Chesney, who I hadn't uh, known of before and met through watching the documentary. 
Kevin, what was your what made you want to do this? What was your inspiration in even wanting to go to go here? Well, I had uh, I had made a documentary series before called Emergency Room Life and Death at VGH. Um, VGH stands for Vancouver General Hospital, and so that was a documentary series about kind of Vancouver's biggest and actually Western Canada's biggest hospital and emergency department. And so that was my first kind of introduction to um, a number of paramedics. We did in, in our first season. I did several ride-alongs. We had one episode where we followed some subjects who were were paramedics in Vancouver. And through that, I kind of got to know some of them. And and about a year ago, when I, I first was kind of thinking about doing a, some kind of documentary or project about originally, I was thinking of looking at kind of what was happening in Vancouver uh, with the, the opioid crisis. And I met with a, a friend who's a doctor, and she works down there, and she said, well, you know, that story is kind of evolving so rapidly. But you know what not enough people are talking about is – is the first responders. And I, that yeah. was kind of really the eye opener for me. And I, I had heard, obviously, there's been an increase in awareness in the last few years of PTSD amongst first responders, but I hadn't really thought of like kind of specifically the people in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I ended up reaching out to some friends who I knew who were paramedics and one of them made mention of Clive and I had known Clive because he's actually, he, he was never featured prominently, but he appears kind of in the background of, of emergency room. And I certainly knew his face because he'd been in, come into the emergency department a lot when we were in there. So his mutual friend told me a little bit about his story and I, I had had no idea. So that was kind of the impetus. I, I kind of was, was shocked to learn that what Clive had gone through because every time I had met him, he seemed like somebody who had everything together, who, yeah. you know, he's an impressive guy. He's he's articulate. He's charismatic. He's easy to like. And, you know, he seemed like he was really good at his job. So to know that he was on the inside going through such turmoil was such a kind of an eye opener for me. So that was that was really kind of how it began. At, at one point, I mean, I, I ended up interviewing and speaking with a whole bunch of different paramedics in the course of making it. But whenever you make a film, you kind of have to keep it focused on a few characters just so right. the audience can, you know, aren't overwhelmed with too many people. So we we wound up focusing on these three. And that was just, yeah, that was kind of the how the project evolved. Now, Kevin, did you find when you wanted to make this, did you get, was there any pushback as far as buy-in to make this or, or no? Uh, no, I mean, people have asked me that before. Did you have a hard time finding subjects? Definitely not. I mean, that it speaks to how widespread it is that, I had no shortage of, of options. I had lots yeah. of people reach out to me. Um, and I'm just, my, my hat goes off to everyone who is willing to share their story. And I, I feel bad that I couldn't have included more people. It's, um, you know, it, it, it's only, it's, it's an hour long broadcast documentary. So that's actually only when you take out the commercial breaks, yeah. it's only 45 minutes. So. Right. It would have, it wouldn't have been hard for me to find 45 subjects, but then you just have one minute pieces of yeah. content and that's not as powerful as actually getting to spend some time as it is. If you do the math, it's basically we only spend 15 minutes with each person and that's not that much. So I had no, uh, certainly not from the, the paramedic community across the country. I certainly had, um, a lot of buy-in, yeah. I, you know, there's little pockets of, um, of, of kind of, I, I'm, I'm cautious of how I describe yeah. this, but resistance to the, the exposure, which really says to me just how, how much of a problem the stigma really is still, is still there. I was shocked. I was frankly shocked at how many other entities expressed kind of some reservation about focusing on this. And perhaps, perhaps that's, you know, not something that needs to be, are we, are we really sure that that's what's going on? That this is not just a few like people who are having their own mental health problems. And I was really blown away that there was that kind of, yeah. Uh, mindset yeah, it is it's amazing that there are still those thoughts out there but they are there and uh, and that's okay and we need to get to those people and you know through things like this but you're right i mean they, they still exist out there these this old way of thinking and the, those stigmas are still very strong uh kevin how long did it take you how long of a project was this from beginning to end to put this together uh well it's always hard to know wh- where to identify at the beginning yeah you know? yeah because it's kind of a the nature of making uh, a documentary is there's, there's a whole kind of process of development where you're not necessarily making it officially yet, where you're, you're hoping to, but the, uh, 
the network and the other funding entities are just kind of waiting to see what it would actually be. And so I, I think um, I, back in the summer was when I first um, started reaching out to subjects and did a little bit of filming just kind of to find possible characters. And mm-hmm. um, and then, then there was kind of a, a, a process through the fall of actually raising the funding. But then we basically, you know, the the actual production itself kind of began in earnest very very uh relatively recently this was a fairly fast process and we we were basically everything you see in the film was basically shot between october and february uh, as recently as um, just over a month ago wow well that's amazing uh because again i can't say enough about it when i watched it 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 hits you like a kick in the stomach which is exactly what it needs to do in in my opinion I mean, when you look at when you look back now, and you you watch this after you put it together, you mentioned people that you know still have this old school thought that you know this this really might not be as big a problem as we think. I mean, for me, one of the things that was even though I I kind of knew it, it shocked me was that you know this ten out of every one hundred thousand members of the general public commit suicide. But in the paramedic community, it's 56 out of every 100,000. That hit me right in the face. I mean, for you, I have two questions for you. When you look mm-hmm. back now and you've watched this, A, does it meet your, did it meet your expectations of what you wanted to do? And B, what in it shocked you the most? Or, you know, what didn't you, what did you think you might know that you didn't know after watching it, you know, until you watched it? Uh, well, I mean, the, to answer the first question, it's hard to know if I, uh, I mean, I don't know what the impact of it is yet since it's not right. out there. Um, so that's hard to say. Um, were, were you happy though how it came out? Did it, did it tell well, us yeah, the I mean, way you if, wanted to? <laughs> the filmmaker is always would be happy to, uh, to keep tinkering away. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I'm, I'm proud of the, the stories and I think all three subjects are, I mean, I'm just kind of in awe of them. Uh, mm. you know, there's, there's a saying, when you make films that you're supposed to be friendly with your subjects, but not friends. I have a hard time not being in awe of these three people and wanting to be their friend because I, I find them all uh, really impressive, both for who they are and how they can carry themselves, but also what they've gone through and how they've handled kind of their post-traumatic growth, which is, um, you know, not something we touch on in the film really, but I've really heard a lot from, from people involved who talk about sometimes you know, how people have channeled their such a such a awful experience into something positive. And I'd say these three are examples of that, just even by sharing Absolutely. their story and the advocacy yeah. that represents. So I feel proud to kind of put all three, put a spotlight on these three individuals. I, I Yeah, I think they're all really, really impressive people. And then uh, in terms of what I learned, I mean, uh, you, you you identified it. I mean, just the, the sheer numbers are so staggering. Like, the yeah, the fact that at least five times the national average um, are, you know, the, the numbers on, on suicide involved in paramedics is just so disturbing. And it's hard to look at that and not realize that there's obviously a crisis, as, as Vince says in his words. And I, I think um, I think when people see that and, you know, that's that's a, the minimum. I, I spoke to several family members um, that people contacted me like, oh, you should talk to this person. They're either the widow or the the parent of a paramedic who had committed suicide. And there was a lot of reluctance, first of all, to even bring any attention to the fact that their, their family member or spouse had committed suicide, much less that it was attributed to PTSD. And that just shows, I mean, there, there's so much stigma around suicide and there's so much stigma around PTSD that it's it, those numbers are just the ones we know for sure in all likelihood it's higher so that is the stuff that um, that floors me yeah and that's a really good point the, those are only numbers that have been reported and I mean I would bet anything on this earth that we would be really staggered by the actual number if we ever got to see them it would be so much larger than that um, that that I mean that that's a good point so Kevin this this uh, documentary is about to air. Tell us where we can see this and when. Uh, it will be on on CBC Television on Sunday, April 8th at uh, 9 o'clock p.m. It will be available online on like anything on the CBC network. You can watch it online basically as of that night. So you can either tune in or if you can't watch it at that time, you can always watch it 
online at cbc.ca right after the broadcast. Perfect. That's, that was my next question. If people do miss it, are they still going to be able to go on and get it and stream it? And uh, that'll be that'll be wicked. Kevin, I want to... I mean, I want to thank you on behalf, you know, as a paramedic myself, and I'm going to speak for all paramedics, and broad, more broad than that for first responders. I want to, I want to thank you for doing this. It's hugely important. I'm, I, w- I want to say something to you that I also said to Janice Landry, who's a, a journalist out here in Nova Scotia, who does a lot of work for the Temecon Memorial Trust and and sheds a lot of light on this issue. We have an epidemic here of staggering proportions and even though we have some first responders who want to step forward and tell their story and are good at that we need all different kinds of people in order to make this work and one of the people we need with a a very specific skill set are people like you who can evoke emotion through telling a story on film without you without you as a really important piece of this puzzle this doesn't work so I want to welcome you to the family because you're just as important as the first responders who tell their stories are to trying to make this, you know, trying to battle this epidemic. I want to thank you very much. John, it's, uh, that, that means a lot. Um, I really appreciate that. It's, uh, it literally feels like the least I can do. I'm, I, you know, I'm one of the people, I didn't mention this, but I'm, I'm one of the millions of people out there who owe their life to paramedics. I had a cardiac arrest five years ago, and oh, wow. uh, had it not been for paramedics responding, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. Uh, so, and that's not unique. There's lots and lots and lots of people who who owe that. And uh, I think it's uh, shocking that the people that we, in our society, who we entrust our livelihood to, who we expect and have this kind of this sense of almost entitlement that when, when something serious happens when we have an emergency people come to our rescue and yet to know that the design of the system has led to them suffering themselves and that that's not being addressed more efficiently is shocking to me um and so this is the the least i can do to hopefully move the dial a little bit so i hope it provokes that um that awareness all paramedics and first responders uh that the we see these numbers change Absolutely. I mean, and this is certainly going to move the dial. Anybody who watches this, and if you're listening, if you're a first responder or you know a first responder, so basically that's everybody, you you need to watch this documentary. I'm going to I'm going to take a quote from a, a future guest that I recorded a chat with, and he said this, and this is my challenge to you, Kevin, and to everybody listening, and even to myself. As long as it takes more courage to ask for help than it does to pull a trigger... Our work is not done. Your work is not done. My work is not done. Anybody who's listening, your work is not done until that changes. That's a powerful final note. Agreed. Kevin, thank you again. I really appreciate you taking the time. Please take care of yourself, and I can't wait for this to come out. And if we can do anything for you at all, ever, if you have anything new coming in the future or anything you'd like to talk to us about, please reach out. Again, welcome to the family, brother. I really appreciate your work. Will do. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a, a real pleasure. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Now my shift is finally over. I gotta deal with what's by. Okay. How excited are you to watch this documentary? If you are not crazy excited, you need to go back and listen to this podcast again because you missed something. It's going to be great. Please tune in. Tell everybody you know about this. This is important. And then let me know what you thought of it after you see it. Get a hold of me on Facebook. Write some comments uh, however you listen to this podcast. Write some comments on that medium after you watch it and let us know what you thought. You're going to love it. I loved it. All right. What else do I want to tell you about? You know, recently I've had been talking to you know, many different people. And even not just recently, just, you know, ever since I've been doing this podcast. People that struggle and they talk to me and they, you know, they tell me that they they tried to do something and, you know, tried to take a step towards healing and it was uncomfortable, so they didn't do it. Well, here's the deal. 
there is no growth without discomfort. So there's no easy path. There's no just going to sleep and having a nice peaceful night and great dreams and waking up better. Really better. It doesn't happen. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of being uncomfortable. It takes a lot of going outside your norms and outside your comfort zone. You know, talking about our feelings and really being honest about ourselves and connecting with people emotionally is not easy. It's hard. It sucks initially. Afterwards, it's awesome. Then you want to do it all the time. That's what it is with me anyway. I didn't like it. Didn't like doing it. Gave a lot of pushback. Made a lot of excuses. Always said, you know, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll try again some other time. Stop it. you got to stop doing that. Stop saying that to yourself. Stop giving yourself an excuse. Stop thinking and start doing. If it's uncomfortable, congratulations. It's working. Anyway, that's my thought on that. So, if you liked this podcast, like the others, share them. Please share them. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave me comments. This has happened a little bit more recently, which is awesome. I have people that are commenting on episodes and you know, asking me a couple things. Do that, please. Take an extra five minutes after each podcast and engage with me somehow. It's awesome. I look forward to it. It really, it actually brightens my day. Sometimes, that's the one thing that, you know, I could be in a, a real tough place. And then all of a sudden I'll get a comment or somebody will leave some feedback or say something and boom, changes my day. But I think that's, it's like that with everybody. Everybody likes being engaged with then they feel valued and feel like they matter. So that's not specific to me, but please do it because it makes a big difference. I would love it. Remember our Facebook page contest to get up to a 1,000 likes. If you already like the page now, share the page. Tell other people about the page because you have a chance to win on this as well. And then when we get to a 1,000 likes, as you know... We're going to give away five Tema swag bags, which I will make sure are awesome. You know, everybody's in on this. Everybody has a chance to win. So please help, because as I said before, you guys are all executive producers, which means you have a job, and this is it. Please. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the first Tema Talk side chats. I got some ideas for some more in the future. If you have any ideas or someone that you th- would like me to talk to that's kind of outside the norm or just has a cool story, cool mental health story to tell, send them to me. Send them my way and uh, we'll get it done. Okay? And uh, and it won't be long now. And then you'll have another episode of Talks to listen to. So, there's that. Alright? Always take care of yourself and each other. More love, less judgment. Cause we ain't superheroes, we're just ordinary people trying to make a difference and the first on every scene. And it's a heavy, heavy burden to carry.